day, good day everyone. So thank you for your time na maka-start ako ta sa aton nga new lecture. So in continuation sa mga previous speeches na ako nga na-perform na last year, I will be continuing some topics regarding basic animal anatomy and physiology. So this is in line with your topic sa aton nga subject, Introduction to Animal Science, and I will be your instructor, instructor sa sining uh, school year or sa sining uh, semester. So in main as main reference sa aton nga uh, wait lang. Okay. Okay. Main reference naton sa aton nga uh, subject is would be this one ng anatomy and physiology of farm animals but different ang akon gigamit ng reference sa inyong module so bisa din man tong uh, reference same lang gyapon ng thoughts na so you can read one of them or both depende sa inyong convenience so let's define first the following as an introduction so number one is anatomy so what does anatomy mean so it pertains to structure of the organs of a certain animal. So, kita describe niya ang shape, ang location, or topographical location in relation to another organ, and so on, as long as it pertains to structure. So, next is physiology. If the anatomy talks with the structure, so physiology deals with the function of that organ. For example, we know the organ, common is brain, heart, so the brain is located at the head, the heart is located, so it was covered with a rib cage and especially the sternum. So amuna ng structure, then what is the function? So that is the dara na masulod ang physiology. Next is the gross anatomy or macroscopic anatomy. So this branch of anatomy nang deals with the gross appearance of the organs or systems sa body sa animal. And comparative anatomy is uh, an extension of gross anatomy. It's because, nga, for example, we will discuss the anatomy of the dog sa gross anatomy. So in comparative anatomy, that organ sa ido, i-compare natin sa other farm animals. For example, ang itsura sa kidney sa dog is different from the kidney of the cattle. And also different man siya sa horse. So ginakumpare ni mo ang structure sang isa ka organ and that is, that is the concept of comparative anatomy next is embryology so embryology is nang the study of the development of an animal from the fertilization up to the last day sang iyang uh, conception or sa sulod sa iyang sang iyang mama next is histology or microscopic anatomy so histology or microscopic anatomy deals with the study of tissues so gross anatomy is macroscopic. Iyang uh, counterpart or microscopic is the histology. So at the microscopic level, ano siya. If there is a microscopic level, there is also an ultrastructural cytology. So subcellular level, pagini ang iyang uh, ano iyang uh, level. Kung sa histology tissue palang ni si ultrastructural cyt cytology is subcellular so mas gamay pa sa cell ang pagstudy sa sa iya or ang detail mismo sa cell next is the systematic anatomy sort of the same lang siya sa comparative and gross anatomy so but gina discuss niya ang anatomical parts according to system so that includes the respiratory system the skeletal system digestive system so by system of systematic anatomy. Whereas in gross anatomy and comparative anatomy, we can discuss the same na as a, in a systematic point of view, pero pwede man siya by region. For example, the red region, a head region. So ano ang parts sa head? Ano ang mga organs dira? This, regardless of the system, basta kung ano lang makita ni mo. So amo na siya ang kinalain sa systematic anatomy, sa topographical anatomy. Okay, so nomenclature for the systematic anatomy. So skeletal system, osteology, chief structures, bones, articular system, arthrology, joints, muscular system, myology, it pertains to the muscles, digestive system, respiratory, urinary, reproductive. It, it includes all in the field of splanchnology or studies of internal organs. 
Next is the product, uh, endocrine system, endocrinology. It pertains to the ductless glands. So there are two types of glands, the exocrine and the endocrine glands, which will be discussed in the later videos or so later na your lessons. Next, neurology, study of the nervous system. It pertains to brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Circulatory system, cardiology. It pertains to hearts and the blood vessels. And sensory system, esthesiology, which pertains to our five sense or our four sense organs, especially the eye and ear. Tama na siya ang mas ginapokus. Dara. So, okay. For the pop-up question, what is the first major organ that will fully develop on the embryonic stage of the animal? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. So, the correct answer is heart. Yes, the first major organ will be fully developed on the embryonic stage. How about the last? Okay, five, four, three, two, one. So that's it. The correct answer is lungs. So take note, first major organ, heart, and last major organ that will fully develop on the embryo stage is lungs. That is why nga, once ipanganak ang animal or misan sa human gani, ang first na ginastimulate some obstetrician or the pediatrician ko sa tawo, veterinarians for the for the animal counterparts is ang respiration mismo sa animal it's because nag amo na siyang last ng organ nga gaka develop so amo gina ang gina stimulate kay amo na siya ang paunahon dayon response so that's it okay so okay for the next topic in the future or in the next video na lang ni regarding sa anatomical terminologies or directional terms. So, thank you guys and hopefully may na-learn ka mo sa sasing uh, topic. So, thank you!